As you saw with the graphs of logarithmic functions, a logarithm does not have a complete domain. What I mean is not all real numbers work inside of a logarithm. So for example, if we have our function f of x, which is equal to a dx, it's just a standard exponential function. We can see that the domain of f is going to be all real numbers, sure enough. Uh, but the range of f is going to only be uh, 0 to infinity. It's only going to be positive numbers. Now, when it comes to the inverse function, these things get swapped around. So the domain, the domain of f actually becomes the range of f inverse. So every number can get hit by a logarithm. That is, every, every uh, y coordinate could be part of a logarithm. But on the other hand, the domain of f inverse is going to be the range of the function. So in this case, the logarithm, right, the, the domain of a logarithm here, logarithm base a, this is only going to be 0 to infinity. So that is when you take something like log base a of x, we have to have that x is greater than 0. Greater than 0. Equality is not allowed. Negative is not allowed here. Uh, much, much like taking the square root of a negative, if you take the logarithm of a negative, it actually produces... It's going to produce uh, imaginary output, just sort of like, just for a fun little fact right here, if you take the log, uh, let's say the, the natural log of negative 1, this is actually equal to pi times i, uh, for which I won't give any more explanation about it. But the point is, we can't take, we can't take uh, logarithms of negative numbers because it actually produces imaginary numbers. And also, if you take like the log base a of 0, this really, if it was anything, um, it would have to be like negative infinity, which is not a number. So we have to rule out anything other than positive um, operands with our logarithm. So if, for example, we have a function f of x equals the, nat or the log base 2 of x plus 3, very similar to finding domains of square root functions, we have to make sure that the operand, right, the input, is positive. So to find the domain here, we have to solve the inequality x plus 3 is greater than 0 is easy enough just subtract three from both sides we get x is greater than negative three and so then the domain of our function f here would be negative three to infinity uh, where we do not include negative three here because uh, the, uh, the the log base three of zero is undefined in this situation so the domain would be negative three to infinity the difficulty here of solving this comes down to uh, really how complicated is the argument of the logarithm that is this this function inside of it well if we have f of x equals the common log of 5 minus 2x to find the domain we have to solve the inequality 5 minus 2x is greater than 0 for which then we can add 2x to both sides we get 5 is greater than 2x we could divide both sides by 2 we get 5 halves is greater than x or if we flip things around we get x is less than 5 halves in which case, this suggests to us that the domain of f here is going to equal negative infinity up to 5 halves, not including 5 halves itself. And so the difficulty, you know, like I said before, it just comes down to how, how complicated is the function inside of the logarithm. If we have f of x this time is equal to the natural log of 4 minus x squared, to find the domain, we have to then solve the inequality 4 minus x squared is greater than 0. This is a quadratic inequality. I think we're better trying to solve this by factoring. 4 minus x squared is a difference of squares. It would factor as 2 minus x and 2 plus x. Notice this tells me that my markers are going to be x equals 2 and negative 2, okay? So if I were to graph this, that is, I want to graph the, I want to graph the quadratic equation y equals 4 minus x squared. Well, then I would get these two markers. You get negative 2 and positive 2. Notice how the leading coefficient actually has a negative sign in front of it. So that means the parabola would concave downward. Oh boy, let's try that again. Uh, that's a little bit better. It doesn't have to be a really great picture though. Uh, but we want things that are that are greater than zero, right? So uh, greater than zero here means we're looking for on the picture those things which are above the x-axis. And so we're going to see that's going to happen in this sector right here because our function here is above the x-axis. So what that means for us is that the domain of our function f in this situation is going to be negative 2 to 2. So we get all numbers between negative 2 and 2, but the x-intercepts of that parabola are not included because that would be the natural log of 0, which is undefined. And this shows you then how you can solve 
uh, for the domain of any logarithmic function. It comes down to how difficult, uh, you know, if you have your function or the natural log of some function g of x, finding the domain really comes down to how easy is it to solve the inequality g of x is greater than zero.